Did you know that the Tyrannosaurus could live to be almost 30 years old? And it had arms that were so small it couldn't reach its own mouth, but could eat up to 500 pounds of meat in one bite. Pretty cool. Um, we're doing a lesson two, um, Mary Anning, The Girl Who Cracked Open the World by Deborah Savoss. Let's get right into it. Until one day, after a storm, Mary was too curious to stay away any longer. She gathered her basket, hammer, and chisel and hurried down to the shore. Her brother Joseph came along too, and when he found an enormous fossil, they forgot their troubles, at least for a while. It was a skull, almost as long as a horse. There was room in its mouth for hundreds of teeth. Mary stared at the eye sockets, great gaping holes, and pictured the eyes that once filled those spaces. After digging and searching and more digging and searching, Mary found the rest of the creature, its ribs, its backbone, everything. The skeleton was too long and heavy for Mary to move by herself. She needed the help of several people to haul everything all the way home. They carried the bones, still encased in rock, into the dim, dusty workshop. Mary looked around, and then she picked up her tools. It was time to get to work. Slowly, she chip-chipped the rock away. She cleaned and shined the bones. She studied them closely and saw how they fit together. When she was finished, she was certain that every bone was in the right place. She stood back and stared. What was this creature? Some people said it was a monster. Mary thought it was simply magnificent. The skeleton was sold and sent to a museum in the city of London. Scientists there couldn't wait to see it and name it. It was the first complete skeleton of this creature that anyone had ever found in the world. This creature, the scientists believed, lived millions of years ago. They wanted to know more about the Earth long ago, and the bones helped them do that. The men quickly forgot about the girl, who found what they were looking at. After much talking and arguing, the scientists named the creature. They called it Fish Lizard or Ichthyosaur. The Ichthyosaur was put on display so everyone could see it. When people asked, Who found this creature? Sometimes Mary's name was mentioned, but most of the time no one talked about Mary. The men who studied the creature and named it were mentioned instead. They were scientists. They were experts. Mary was just a poor girl without much education who was lucky to find the creature. What did she know? Mary knew plenty of things, and as the years passed by, she learned more and more. She cut open dead fish on her kitchen table so she could see how they looked inside. It was messy work, but Mary wanted to learn all that she could about fish. Maybe, she thought. This knowledge would help her understand fish that lived in the past. She made detailed drawings of fossils she found so she would remember them. She examined one fossil and compared it to another one. How are they similar? How are they different? Why? Mary wanted to know. In the evening before she went to bed, Mary wrote to scientists in other places. She asked them questions and then waited, eagerly, for the scientists to write back. Mary was too poor to buy books. So whenever she could, she borrowed other people's books about science. After she had read them, sometimes several times, she wrote down the important ideas. Mary didn't know at the time, but she was doing the same work that all scientists did. She was asking questions, gathering information, and making drawings, and notes of everything she studied.